Hello and welcome to Ula Tilly Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Pisces. If Pisces is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. All right, let's get started. And so we have the three of discs and that has everything to do with work. Works, work, work. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look and see what these tea leaves have to say. And so if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit that little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. It is free to subscribe. Okay. So immediately to me, it looks like we have a little bit of decisions made, right? Um, it almost feels like, so we have the star right up here. Okay. The star is a goal, a dream, something that you are striving towards. Now over here, I have a person who is kind of beginning to reach out for the dream. And then we have a person over here who has their hand on the shoulder of the person who is reaching out for the dream. And I have this distinct feeling that there is conflict or at least kind of this pulling back this, um, I, I don't think it is to stop you from achieving your dream, but it almost feels like um, a little bit of jealousy, possibly, as you spend more and more time uh, seeking out the things that you need to accomplish this dream, if that is like furthering your education, um, you know, expanding your skill set. Maybe um, putting in more hours at work, your career. Maybe you are away from the home a little bit more, whatever it is. Now we have this other person. Maybe it is a family member. Maybe it is a, uh, a spouse or a partner or something like this. But I feel like, you know, there's this sense of holding you back a little bit. Um, because, yeah this dream that you have, you're investing a lot of yourself into it. Um, and though, you know, maybe this person really does, you know, care for you and want you to have everything that you, that you want in life to achieve everything that you want in life. Uh, the actual practicality of the time and energy put into that goal Maybe, you know, they, they're they realizing this is a lot. Barely see you anymore. You know, we never get to be together. That kind of thinking. So I don't think that they're actively trying to, um, you know, mess with your with your work or your your interest your drive your desire for this but i do think that there is energy there that indicates that yeah they um you know they they want more time of you they want to see you more you know this maybe the dynamic has shifted because you are focused on this thing so it's something to consider, right? Maybe making some compromises, maybe reevaluating, you know, this, this might not be in line with, uh, how your life or how you envision your life going forward. 
So let's see. We also have a little fairy right here. You can see the body, the legs kind of out. Um, now over here, when I saw this one, I immediate, immediately thought of the Hierophant. We have the head of an animal, the body of a person in a robe, um, kind of the high priest, high priestess. Over here, we have a pig. You can see the eye, the, the nose. Um, now we have a goddess sitting upon it. Um, Circe, right? And, or is it Sybil? Oh my gosh. I always mix them up. The one with the pigs. Let me see. I know. I'm just... <laughs> it does matter. They're quite different. Um, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I was right. Pigs. So Circe, yes. And I was trying to think of the um, the Odyssey, right? <laughs> um, so we have this goddess, right? A nurturing, magical, uh, kind of material <laughs> um, goddess figure sitting upon the the pig there so to me immediately I'm thinking we have all these magical beings we have a magical goddess a goddess of magic we have a um, we have the fae the fairy okay a sprite maybe uh, and then we have the hierophant the devotee the high priest, one who has devoted their life to the work, okay? Um, so this magical trio, well, I guess it's more than a trio because we have the pig. Um, I feel that you have a deep, a deep understanding for, uh, for the magical qualities of life. Now, it might be that um, you are somebody who is fairly religious, um, somebody that is fairly spiritual. Um, and I'm thinking, somebody the other day commented, uh, it's a, you know, pretty profound difference between spirituality and religion. Um, and, you know, uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know. It all kind of mixes together for me. So, um, yeah, maybe. I don't mean to offend anybody if we talk about religion here. Um, I know that there are a great deal of people who, um, you know, have probably some bad experiences around religious upbringings and things like that. But... Um, you know, and that's terrible, but I do mention religion and because this is inclusive, you know, I do not, um, I do not want to ever alienate anybody. That's never my intention. Um, and we can be religious and part of a religious sect and also have, um, you know, other spiritual, uh, inclinations and so on. I, we are complex beings, you know. So, um, yes, I was, <laughs> I, I wasn't even sure how to respond to that because, you know, it's, it's personal for each, each of us. Um, but yes, I do feel that there is a sense of, now when we have the Hierophant, this is somebody who, um, adheres to, um, tenants and, and rules and understandings within chosen systems, right? There is usually maybe, um, you know, a pantheon or a, a deity or some philosophical, um, understanding dogma or whatever, uh, that this archetype adheres to. This is a little more buttoned up, right? Now the Fae, um, we know are, 
you know, supposedly anyways, mythological um, beings that are elemental and they kind of um, exist alongside us as many other animals do. Um, and so they're, you know, usually uh, thought of as being somewhat of tricksters, but they're also quite... Uh, dynamic and and within the you know along the spectrum of um uh being benevolent or malevolent that is to say that they can be quite cruel they can also be quite helpful to uh their human neighbors right so then we also have uh this goddess this goddess that is um, can be wrathful, this goddess that is within her power and um, fully realized and beloved and, you know, um, doesn't take a lot of guff, right? So um, I think these all of these energies together, it really does show that there is an experience expansive nature that you have within your private spiritual or and religious uh, emanations right so I do feel that you are somebody who um, dwells in this space because it feels quite cultivated now I also do think with the fae there um, you are somebody who is quite in tune with what I call our backyard spirits. These are the animals, the minerals, the plant life, and um, yeah, some of these ultra natural beings. Um, you know, the uh, it could the elementals, intelligences, aliens, um, fairies, jinn. Um, you know, many other animal spirits and so on many other uh races of of intelligent beings um that we we interact with seen or unseen now to be in balance with them is to live a life that is harmonious as they watch out for us as we watch out for them right and if you treat them poorly or you destroy their environment or, you know, cause um, havoc to the way that they live and however that might be, um, you will feel, you will feel it, you know. And you might say, Lenore, that's pretty um, superstitious. Well, yes, I am quite superstitious. <laughs> I do believe so. Um so, yes, it's it's important to always strive for that harmony, however it is available to you and however you see fit. Okay, so we have the number 50 right in the center here, 50. Now we have the spider, the weaver of dreams, the grandmother right here. And so, uh, yes, and we also have the tower with the fire. Um, we have a person up here next to a, it looks like maybe a, um, a gravestone. So I feel in the past here, um, you've lost somebody who is beloved to you. Um, I, I can imagine that you continue to honor them by going and visiting their place of rest and um, or a place that you honor them, right? Maybe a special place that they loved or, or somewhere that you went together. Um, this, it, you are still in your grief. Um, if it was a few days ago, if it was, you know, weeks or months, years ago, um, it doesn't matter. The grief is still there. Uh, time 
does not adhere to the, you know, any rules, especially when it comes to grieving. Um, so here, over here, I feel, um, you know, with the spider goddess, we have this energy of, um, not only the, the weaver of dreams, but this is a cosmic goddess, a goddess of, um, primordial nature and has the, uh, access to the most uh, deep parts of that unconscious, o unconscious ocean. And so, um, this is, you know, if you could think, why are my dreams so strange? This is because you're filtering, filtering unconscious and collective information, symbols, abstracts, emanations, um, impressions, and sensations. Um, they all come through in these, in these, you know, beautiful plays or, um, immersive worlds that we visit while we're dreaming. And so seeing this spider here, it, I mean, it really does tell me you've been through You've been through this situation that has been one of the most devastating things to happen in your life and maybe will always be. Hopefully, you know, um, will be some of the worst things. You know, we hope that it doesn't get any worse than that. Um, not that I'm saying that it's good that you went through this. Of course not. Um, but you know, you hope that it, I hope that I never feel pain worse than I'm feeling with this. And so, uh, I feel that you're getting into this place where, yeah, actively dreaming quite a bit, being visited by the goddess, but there's also a movement and energy towards realizing that this is the time to be creating your life for yourself to take on the attributes of that spider goddess to be the architect of your own life not living in the you know it is it's like a pool of of sorrow the tears shed um swimming in that right there comes a time when you start to realize, okay, I've been here. This has been very difficult. At times I have not known how to navigate this at all. But here I am and I am going to emerge from this. I'm going to begin to build the life that I know that I want and that I need. I'm going to take these beautiful fragments that have been shown to me, I'm going to create something with it. I'm going to begin to incrementally change the parts of my existence that do not serve me well. Make some difficult decisions, but they will be for the better. This is about the long view. The spider takes its time weaving a pattern meticulously. It's planned out, but it's also, um, you know, something that takes some amount of kind of, you know, on the... <laughs> <laughs> on the job ability to um, improvise, right? And so this job is a, it's an intricate one. It's a long one. It's not something we just up and change overnight and it's all good. No, this is something that will take time. Something that you must be devoted to. And I think that you are. I do think that you are. 
Okay, so we have a an angel here. Um, we also have a hook. We have the name Tony. T-O-N-Y. It looks like Tony. Down here in the emotional waters. So I feel that there's somebody maybe named Tony. It could be. Um, or Tony involved in the situation situation here. Um, in the emotional waters. Really going through something. Now we also have 72. The number 72. Um, and I do feel that there is a sense of uh, the, yeah, the guardian angel being very active in your life. You feel them. You know them. I think you even know them. You maybe even have a name for this beloved. Um, you maybe have uh, a chosen saint or a chosen archangel or something like this. Um, but they're very active in your life. And I feel like it's like they're almost telling you, you need to go check on this person or reach out to them or whatever. Um, there's something going on with, with your friend or your family member. Something, it feels quite emotional, difficult. Okay, let's see. We have a question mark and a dragonfly. So I feel like as you are kind of changing these things in your life, there is a clarity that it's coming. We have the dragonfly who is akin to the air element. Um, also, uh, interestingly, one of the top predators in the insect world um, because of their ability to maneuver so well and they're aerial of course uh, so this tells me that there is a perspective that you are able to gain over um, situations you see things in a way that maybe some people do not and this makes your ability to approach a problem, a situation, a project in a way that is quite innovative. Um, so put that to use, not only in your work life, but in your personal affairs, right? Um, the thing, you know, that comes up is you can have this perspective, um, this understanding, but... We have to get our emotions in line with them, right? To comply. <laughs> and that's not always easy, is it? Okay, let's see. We're going to look at the divine doors here. And I'm going to go ahead and just flip through. I'm going to, oops, stop where it feels right. Okay, and it says, Passages. Spiritual signs of inclination. You're walking through passages of your transformation. There we go. Walking through passages of your transformation. And so it begins. All right, Pisces, I'm going to go ahead and tell you I love you because I do. And I thank you so much. Oh, I'm sorry. I had to stretch there. My goodness. I feel I'm just full of yawns right now. I don't know what is going on. Um, but I thank you so much for spending this time with me. It is always such an honor. It truly is. And uh, if you would be so kind as to like the video, it helps the channel. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit that little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. It is free to subscribe. And um, if you'd like to leave a comment, please do. I'd love to hear from you. 
All right, Pisces. Uh, we'll talk in a few days. You know that I love you. And take care of yourself. <laughs> All right. Good night.